Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this top five unit videos. This is for Blood Angels. So the idea of this video is to help you out making some choices as to which Blood Angels units to add into your army. Uh, perhaps you're new to 40k, perhaps new to collecting Blood Angels, you're thinking about collecting them, which units are good ones to go for. As uh, The angle that I come from is trying to take units that are actually really good in the game, uh, but at the same time, you know, hobby-wise, they're ones that are really worth adding to your collection as well. Um, so you're going to see a number of units that are very themed towards the Blood Angels and yet I'll argue the case they're actually very uh, effective units to take in your army also. Uh, so we'll go in reverse order, so I'll take number 5 and then we'll save the best till last. My top choice will be the last uh, unit that we cover. So by all means, um, experiment here and try out these different units. If you disagree with the order that I've put them in, or you believe there should be some of these units should be not in the list, and others should be added in, then, check, then leave that in the comment section. I encourage you to check out the comment section, see what other people are saying, uh, what their top five units are, what units they think are excellent for Blood Angels, and why. Uh, obviously, I can't put all of the units in. There's some units I don't actually have, which I know are actually pretty good. Um, so input from other experienced Blood Angels players will be great. So, uh, number five then, <laughs> there'll be some controversy in this video, I do have some um, critics for my Blood Angels, but uh, it would be even worse if I put these in at number one, but number five is Assault Terminators, they're in, I have to put them in, I think they, I, I, I rate them very very highly, I'd be very loath to drop these from my Blood Angels list. There's some units that you'll see here in this top five that aren't in my current Blood Angels list. I haven't been able to include them in. Uh, but Assault Terminators. I just think they match the Blood Angels really, really well. You're sort of an aggressive Space Marines chapter. Um, here, Assault Terminators. So the combination that I go for is just a unit of five. Uh, uh, all equipped with Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields. So your base stat line for a Terminator is excellent. Two up armor save, five plus in one save as standard. Uh, two wounds at a time, two attacks base, or a really, really good stat line. Then you give them storm shields, you've got a two up armor save and a three plus in one save. That is really, really reliable and super resilient. And then you give them the thunder hammers and now they've got some real clout in close combat. Times two strengths, fighting at strength fates. They're gonna smash into vehicles monsters, characters, heavy infantry, no problem. AP minus three, which is excellent. If it's Assault Doctrine, AP minus four. Straight three damage, so no sort of D3 unreliable type stuff, but it's three wounds every time. Um, really, really good. Downside is the minus one to hit roll, so three up to hit becomes a four up. That's not that reliable. You can sort of have some bad rounds. It is possible to compensate for that with some relics, or not relics, uh, stratagems, or a stratagem from the new book, or newish book, Blood of Bale, Fury of the First. Use this in any phase, select on Blood Angels Terminator unit from your army. To the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by model on that unit, it's plus one to the hit roll. So you can compensate for that minus one, you can sort of cancel it out with that one point, uh, one command point stratagem. But I, I just, I've used it in pretty much every Blood Angels list I've had for the last seven or eight, nine years. And the units, the amount of targets they've taken down, the amount of vehicles they've smashed to pieces, and the damage that they've absorbed and taken has been fantastic. So, 
Uh, it's all about sending them in at the right point. They are a bit slow on foot, so you'll struggle with if you take a unit like this and then you just deploy them on foot on the battlefield, they're gonna lumber around and be slow. You'll struggle to get them into the fight. And sometimes you wander around the table with them and never get them into combat, which is a shame. You need a delivery system for them. So you, you can go for uh, deep strike. You can teleport them in, teleport strike. But this is turn two onwards. They'll land on the table more than nine inches away from any enemy models and then they can try and attempt to charge. Uh, but if you, if you go for the deep strike, you've, you've got to land, you've got to make that nine inch charge. It's, you know, it's difficult with them. It's not easy. No. I think red first now, the new rules give you plus one to your charge rolls, but even an eight inch charge on 2d6 isn't easy. And reliability is, is, is big now. And if you've got units that you can't rely on, it causes problems. Yeah, they've updated rules for red first. Plus one to wound rolls. When the unit with this ability advances or makes a charge move, it's plus one to the advance or charge roll as well. So deep strike, you need an eight. But still, eight is difficult. I wouldn't rely on it too much. So my preferred method of delivery for these is to stick them inside a transport vehicle. So things like land raiders, storm raven gunship especially, uh, it's a great mode of transportation across the board. And even if your fly goes right up the table and is destroyed, still the Terminators can disembark from that and perhaps you've got them into the right kind of position as well. But, uh, you know, play them in a transport vehicle, play them centrally in the battlefield so they're not out on some flank lost somewhere as, and try and keep all of that in mind because they need to get stuck into close combat if they're to justify the points. 210 points, I think, for them with Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields. But uh, time and again, they have proved their worth in games. So... They make it in at number five. Sometimes I'll take a Sanguinary Priest, a Sanguinary Novitiate, to hang around with them to restore wounds and to resurrect fallen models as well, just to try and keep them uh, alive for as long as possible. So that is number five. The Assault Terminators make it in. And there'll be some people that disagree, but uh, they'll they will continue to vindicate themselves, I hope. <laughs> That's the as the games go on. As uh, so a Terminator Assault Squad. Next is, is a character this time. For number four. So it is the Sanguinot. I very highly rate the Sanguinot. Updated points. I've been updating all the points here. Named characters. Uh, 140 points now. It's not too bad. It's okay. Here he is. So the one that you get that would be fine cast now if you're able to get a hold of him. Uh, I've changed the wings around. I've taken the old wings off. Uh, I did a bit of modelling from the base as well. I cut him off at the base. He's sort of this high. And then I've added in some prosecutor uh, ribbons here just to raise him up a bit higher. A little bit wobbly. <laughs> uh, he's okay because this is actually the lead or the uh, metallic metal model. Uh, and then a prosecutor wings being added on uh, to his jump pack as well, just sort of super glued and slotted in, but just to give him a lot, much bigger wingspan, <laughs> just to make him stand out even more, sort of raise the base up on him as well. Just because he was he wasn't here as the original, he got, he's all the way down there. He's a bit, a bit low, and the wings are a bit small, so change the wings around, and just raised him up, and I think you just get more of a impact with him. So the Sanguinor is in. As two reasons, as a character and as a stat line, it's pretty good, and then he grants some bonuses as well to units that are nearby. Pretty big, actually, to help Blood Angels out. So he's got five wins. He's got five attacks, which is excellent. Six attacks on the charge um, for Space Marines. Uh, a two-up armor save as standard. He does come with a four-up invun save as well. So these things are all very, very good. The Sanguinor can charge even if he fell back in the preceding movement phase. That's very useful, especially now in Ninth Edition. And the great thing about him is the plus one to the attacks characteristic of friendly Blood Angels infantry units whilst within six inches of the Sanguinor. So if you've got multiple assault units, he's very useful to have buried in amongst them. Extra attacks is excellent, and that can really, uh, if you can get as many units as possible receiving that bonus, then he's well worth the points. 
to enhance the number of attacks is, is amazing, especially for real sort of combat based, combat focused army. Uh, and you can fight pretty good as well. Plus two strength from the Incarmine Sword. Um, so strength six. You may say, well, if he goes in against the vehicle, it's going to be fives to wind. Remember, Blood Angels plus one to wind rolls. So fours to wind, threes to wind, and so on. A for minus four is going to cut right through the armor and its damage of D3 as well. So not too bad. Fights against another enemy character, you can hack them down with that sword quite effectively. So it didn't quite make it into my army. I, I guess I took the Smash Captain instead with the Sanguinor, but uh, he's another good choice to take. Yeah, I, I, I rate him, I think he's great, but uh, it's that, I, I wouldn't tell you if that plus one to hit rolls wasn't, or plus one to the attacks wasn't there, I, would, I, I wouldn't consider he wouldn't be in this uh, list here, but um, plus one attacks is big. If you can coordinate it, maybe if he's hanging around with just one unit, it's not that amazing, but if there's multiple Blood Angels units that are all descending in at one point in a murderous assault, to have him in the middle, granting everybody a plus one attack is excellent. Just infantry though. Only infantry that's granted to. So it depends on the theme of Blood Angels Army. Maybe you've got loads of assault marines and maybe you've got loads of sanguinary guard, for example, then uh, plus one attack to help them out is really good. So the Sanguinor is in. Yeah, I'm just making sure that's it. Yeah, so that's pretty much him covered. But uh, he's sadly not quite made it into my current list, but he's there on the fringes for sure. So it's number four. Uh, number four. Number three is. It's not Sanguinary Guard. I've struggled with them. They're hard to get them quite right. It's a staff company have, have edged in uh, over and against them. So, again, they're not in my list currently, but they're on the fringes. And if the Terminators perhaps don't perform too well, Death Company could take their place. As my current combo is a unit of eight, just a smallish unit of them, not too many. We'll cover their combo in just a minute, what they're equipped with. It's sort of a point saving combination where you're not giving them the maximum war gear, but you're still equipping them quite well. Uh, and they can take on all different types of targets with this sort of combination I've got going uh, here. So, Death Company, at uh, base of two attacks for them, plus one attack for Space Marines, it's really, really helps them out. Uh, and then Black Rage. So add one to this unit's attacks characteristic for the duration of fight phase in the preceding charge. If it charged in the preceding charge phase. And you get the 6 plus feel no pain for them as well. Um, so plus 2 attacks on the charge. So a standard uh, Death Company Marine is 4 attacks. And the Assault Doctrine is active. You've got 6 is popping extra attacks as well. Extra bit of AP minus one, and they do get stuck into close combat. So you're getting a, a hefty amount of attacks here uh, for Death Company. So it's well worth equipping them with some decent war gear. So the combination that I go for with these, and it's sort of a, a combination that's first of all it saves you points because you're not giving maximum war gear uh, to all of the units, uh, all of the models, and then uh, it also means this combination you can take on pretty much any kind of target, whatever it is, they'll happily charge into it and can deal with it if it's from hordes to wade through and to hack down as many models as possible, through the heavy infantry characters, monsters, vehicles, and so on. So in order to achieve that you need lot, lots of lightweight attacks, lighter attacks and then some heavy attacks. There's that combination going on. So first two always the double thunder hammer. So on the charge there's eight attacks with them and that will cause trouble, should cause trouble for characters, vehicles, monsters and so on. So that gives me uh, a base there of some anti-heavy infantry, anti-vehicle, anti-monster ability. Then very cheap uh, two power swords and bolt pistols. So now you've got a bit of AP minus three, AP minus four if the assault doctrine is active uh, but just one wound at a time uh, but multiple lots nice lot of attacks so that's your anti-infantry, anti-heavy infantry part. And then if you find yourself plunging into hordes, and just to top up wounds against heavier targets, then four uh, Death Company Marines with bolt pistols and chainsaws. Chainsaws granting the extra attack uh, on top of the other. Two base, two on the charge. Um, so you've got five attacks each. There's 20 attacks there from 
four models. So if you find yourself going into a hordes unit, you don't want to wade into them. Just you know, killing a few each time with the thunder hammers, you need to be able to lay down a blanket of attacks coming through. And so some cheaper infantry here, just with bolt pistols and chainsaws, just to clear away hordes nice and quickly. Power swords to cut through the medium heaviest infantry, and then the thunder hammers to do multiple wound damage against heavier targets. So I find it's quite cheap in points. It's not too bad at all. Uh, you're just paying your base points cost for them. Five points a time for the power swords. Death Company themselves are 19 points each. So, you know, I've kept them at eight. I'm trying to keep the points so you're not just blowing out like 300 point units um, because it's quite likely that once these are deployed and they're used, the opponent's going to go after them and try and wipe them out. Uh, and then Thunder Hammers on regular models is 15 points. It's not too bad, 30 points gets you the Thunder Hammers on them. So that's the Death Company. I, I think they're, I think they're really good. I reckon they're a bit of a throwaway unit. I guess that fits with the fluff and the, and the theme of the Death Company. As I said, once the opponent sees them on the battlefield, locates them, knows where they are, they'll make an effort to destroy them. So if you can shield them in any way, um, again, wandering around on the battlefield on foot is not very effective. They need some kind of delivery system. So a land raider, storm room gunship, would be a great option just to protect them as much as possible and then to quickly maneuver them and get them into position to strike as well. But if there's some nasty target out there, send in the death company and charge in and take it out. It's the kind of thing going on with it. I guess the other thing, by putting the four models in here, just with the storm bolt, uh, uh, bolt pistols and chainsaws, is they can be the ones that take the wounds whilst you protect your heavier element of the unit. So they can, uh, your damage absorption models as well. But eight of them seems to work just fine. You haven't invested a ton of points on them, but still enough of a sized unit, enough war gear there to cause damage. So left company in, getting close to our final choices here so number two is by all means if you agree disagree with these there's other units you want to talk about leave that in the comments section uh, but I've gone for the captain here and the famous what's called the famous uh, blood angels smash captain combination so there he is Lazarus Dawnhammer as he's been named uh, the combination I go for with him is uh, Thunderhammer and then Storm Shield, so you, nasty damage that you can kick out and then he can absorb nasty damage uh, by protecting himself with his Storm Shield. So points cost for him, 105 points base, 40 points for a character Thunder Hammer uh, and then 10 points for uh, the Storm Shield. So your base stat line for Captain is, is alright, you've got the option to give him a jump pack. Uh, he's got 5 wounds which is alright, four attacks which is alright but you, there's some ways to enhance that so uh, plus one attack on the charge space range helps out, two up to hit, there is minus one for the thunder hammer uh, he gets reroll ones so he's, one of the main reasons I take him is the reroll ones ability it helps out Marvel Blood, Ang Blood Angels units with their firepower, especially the heavier guns like laser cannons and so on, so there's that to bear in mind he's got some good buffs going on for units nearby uh, that also applies in close combat, so he can help out himself and other units within six inches getting real ones to hit, uh, which is very, very useful. You know, you roll a load of ones, it's disastrous. Got the captain there, you can get those re rolled, which is very useful. Um, he comes with a four plus iron halo save, uh, invun save as standard, but uh, I give him the storm shield for a three plus invun save, uh, which has proved useful, very, very useful because often he charges into combat and it's against a target that's tough and mean, survives and then strikes back, so you need some kind of resilience with him. Uh, I'll try and show you all the combinations here so you get the most out of this character. So, uh, Warlord traits first of all. I'm just going to stack up some things to try and make him as good as possible. So, Artisan of War you give him plus one damage, so that Thunder Hammer can become damage four. That's a pretty good option to go for. Uh, you can also go for uh, Gift of Foresight. Now, or maybe just call out this stratagem. I use, usually use this stratagem. Death Visions of Sanguinius, just as you're putting the army together. 
uh, one command point. Use your stratagem in mustering your army. Select a Blood Angel's Captain, Chaplain or Lieutenant, so that's him, from your army. Uh, other than Primaris, named characters such as Commander Dante. That model gains the Death Company keyword and the Black Rage ability for the duration of the battle. So, he gets Death Company. So now he's got a 6 plus feel no pain, because he's Death Company. And, and then, uh, he also gets Black Rage. So now he gets plus 2 attacks on the charge. He's gone from 4 attacks base, it'll become 6 attacks on the charge. Uh, with Black Rage, so there's that it really helps out. Just trying to get as, as much value out of him. So you're paying points, but then you can use other methods to try and get more value out of him uh, for the points that you've paid. Remember, he's on plus one to his wound rolls, red first. He's on plus one to his charge rolls as well, for, uh, red first rolls, updated rolls of Blood Angels. All very useful. And then. I want to show you uh, relics. A couple of difficult choices to make here. You can go for Hammer of Bow, which is a Thunder Hammer, but there's no minus to the hit rolls. So you want to keep that twos to hit, re rolling ones, exceptionally reliable. I'm just about edging this one, Angel's Wing, at the moment, but I, I could, may switch to Hammer of Bow. Jump Pack Model 1, you can re roll foul charge rolls from Model Equipped to the Angel's Wing, that's very useful. And then your opponent cannot fire overwatch as well. So if there's that target and the opponent's on standby ready to try and use that overwatch stratagem, then uh, the Angel's Wing is very, very useful. We're just going to deny the overwatch from taking place. So there's that one as well. So some great options to try and enhance and get the most out of this model. Uh, and then stratagems as well. Three of them I want to show you. Four, five of them actually. <laughs> really good ones. So first of all, upon wings of fire, so a jump pack model from your army, uh, you can remove him from the battlefield during the middle of the game, and then immediately redeploy uh, on the same turn, just making sure you're over nine inches away from enemy models. So all of a sudden he finds he's, he's finished a combat over in one corner, the enemy's destroyed, uh, he's, he's been called to go somewhere else, he can just deep strike disappear off the table and deep strike somewhere else exactly where it needs to be so very very useful then you can combine that with Descent of Angels use the strategy before making a charge roll of a Blood Angels jump pack unit from your army that was set up on the battlefield earlier this turn roll 3d6 to determine the charge distance instead of 2d6 so that's 3d6 in total so it's way more likely that charge is going to go ahead because it's disastrous if you land poised to charge and it doesn't happen and a 9 inch charge or an 8 inch charge of Blood Angels you can't rely on that. Half the time it's not going to go ahead and so you, you need help. So Descent of Angels will help you get that charge off. Quite quite likely, very likely it's going to go ahead with that. Uh, then to give them even more attacks, remember potential 6 attacks now on the charge, you can go for Red Rampage. So an extra D3 attacks on a character as well, so you can go from 6 attacks to 7, 8, 9 attacks. If it's Assault Doctrine, 6 is going to pop extra attacks so loads then if he doesn't crack through his target you can play honor the chapter because it's an infantry unit you can just fight again it costs you three command points but game changer that one you can smash his check second chance to smash his way for a target maybe to finish off a vehicle or to take down a second vehicle he's charged into something like that with that one and then if he is slain if the opponent does get through all that durability then only in death does duty end two command points before he's removed from play gets to fight for a second time and I've used that plenty of times in games so loads of strength perhaps many of my many of my command points are spent on him in a game <laughs> so, uh, yes I think I mentioned gift of foresight no yeah what other warlord traits come back to warlord traits gift of foresight is the one I take at the moment so uh, roll a d6 each time your warlord loses a wound, re-rolling rolls of 1. So remember he's on a 6 plus feel no pain already because he's death company. Now you're getting re-roll dice rolls of 1. Um, and then that wound is ignored. If your warlord has the black rage ability, which he has because the death visions are sanguineous, then you instead ignore, ignore wound rolls on 5 or 6 um, instead. So 5 plus feel no pain, re-rolling 1's pretty useful. You know, so he's going to go from 5 wounds to equivalent of six, seven, eight wounds 
because you're anticipating the number of five pluses rewarding ones that he's going to make during the game. So uh, you're just trying to add to his durability to try and keep him alive for as long as possible. And that little bit of feel no paint just just really helps. So he gets sniped out from somewhere, or he's ambushed by some melter type weapons, and you know technically he should die. The opponent rolls high enough, and then you've got some kind of chance of stopping some of those wounds from coming. Through. And usually in games, I'll try and keep him alive. The first few turns of the game, he's there just to grant the buffs to help the army out as it maneuvers into position, lays down some firepower, and then in the middle stage of the game, he's sort of lining himself up for some selected close combat where he should prevail and win to stay alive. I want to try and keep him alive, uh, and then uh, later on in the game, he can be a bit more reckless. But uh, he's got many responsibilities for Lazarus. He's uh, the weight of the world is on his shoulders. But that's option number two uh, here for the Blood Angels. So, my last option uh, here is another HQ choice. Probably some of you have guessed who or what it is. My current favourite. It's the Librarian Dreadnought. So, a unique unit for the Blood Angels. Just looks fantastic, the red colour scheme with the blue in the middle, the force halberd. Very, very cool. This was a subscriber recommendation. I think on YouTube people were saying, you know, heartily recommend you get a Librarian Dragnaught. They're brilliant models, fantastic in the game. And I listened, got one, and wherever it was, thanks very much. <laughs> it's been a great addition to the army. As I said earlier, you know, a, a, a unique unit for the Blood Angels as well. So. So, you know, collection-wise, it's a great model to add in. So, Librarian Dreadnought, uh, it's similar to the Captain, a stat line that needs some kind of help. The stat line's okay, but it's not that great. But there's some ways to make it just utterly amazing, just for some different things that you can stack up on top. Um, so the base stat line, movement 6, weapon skill 2+, plus, ballistic plus skill 3+, plus strength 6, top is 7, 8 wounds, 3 attacks, which is, yeah, it's okay. So they need help with that. And 3 up armor save. Uh, points cost for him is 143 points, so 120 points base, 0 points for the Halberd, 3 points for a Storm Bolter underneath, and then 20 points for the Fist. Lazarus, the Smash Captain, by the way, is 155. I think I've covered that already. So, my Brain Dragnaught needs help, so we'll try and stack up some bonuses with him. So, I rate the Force Halberd the most. Plus four strength, so he's going to be fighting strength of ten. Remember, your plus one to the wound rolls means that pretty much every target out there, it's going to be twos to wound on the charger if he is charged. Uh, it's AP minus four, so especially against targets of no invun save, just going to mince through the armor uh, and grant the opponent usually no save at all. And then flat three damage, very solid and reliable damage coming for his boss. So there is that potential with the halberd there. It's just what's letting the dreadnought down is. Uh, two things, not enough attacks, and slow. So there's two areas there, um, so we'll try and compensate for that. The Furioso Fist is okay, uh, but it's, it's AP minus 3 instead of AP minus 4. Uh, it's times 2 strength, so you get a bit more strength. Strength 12 instead of strength 10, but with red first, it doesn't really make too much difference. So I prefer the Force Halberd. So one thing I do with the Force Halberd at the moment for my current list is deadly enough, but I give it a Warlord trait, Artisan of War. You can pay a command point for an extra Warlord trait for a model that isn't your Warlord. Uh, that's one of the stratagems from Blood of Balbuk. And it's plus one to damage characteristic for one weapon carried by your Warlord, so uh, it can't be a Relic of Bow. So your standard Force Halberd, damage three becomes damage four. So now, three successful wounds against the vehicle. Your average vehicle is just going to destroy it. AP minus four. Four damage, that's 12 wins from three attacks coming through, so really, really good. Uh, you can then go for trying to get everything I can here just to because when I got this model, it wasn't people just saying get a librarian drug not, they're really good, it was get a librarian drug not and give them this, 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 and this, and then they're really good. So, this is what I'm trying to pass on to you here. So, uh, remember Wisdom of the Ancients. If you feel you need to be ultra reliable with your attacks, just grant three real ones, Blood Angels units nearby, and it's going to include the Dreadnought. Play it on the Dreadnought, so you know, two to hit real ones. 
just makes those attacks almost guaranteed uh, to come through. So there's that to bear in mind. Uh, then three attacks is okay. Remember, Space Marines on the charge. There's an extra attack. If the Assault Doctrine is active, six is popping extra attacks on top of that as well. So that's okay. Then uh, a strategy that's super useful. Similar one I'd use for the Captain. Red Rampage, D3 extra attacks for a character. He's a character Dreadnought, so uh, you can now give him three attack space, four on the charge, plus D3, so now you're pushing up to five, six, seven attacks. Now you're starting to get a tasty amount of attacks available uh, for him. As uh, Bearing in mind another strength of him, and the Smash Captain, and the Sanguinal, these are all characters, so you can hide these in amongst the ranks of your infantry and vehicles. So, something else to bear in mind, you know, to try and you can operate with a bit more freedom behind your lines. He's not going to be picked off the same way as a vehicle and can just be shot at. He has the number of wounds where he's, he's better protected behind friendly units. So he is in. Uh, like something to bear in mind. And then I'm just holding off here because it's psychic powers is the big one. Yeah, these two, that's what I wanted to mention. Honor the chapter. Uh, no, 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 it's not. It's only in Death to Duty End. Honor the chapter is only for infantry or blood angels by because you can't use it on Dreadnoughts. But only in Death to Duty End, you can. It says Blood Angel's character. He's the character Dreadnought. So if he's slain, he gets to fight again. So he charges in, causes crazy damage. It doesn't quite take out this Imperial Knight, for example, or Chaos Knight. Uh, he's then slain in return because he's gone against a tough target. Then just before it's removed, you play only in Death's Duty End, and before he's removed from the table, fights again and then brings the target down. And, you know, it's 143 point unit, and you can charge him into something that's way more in points, and there's a great chance you can destroy it. He charges into some Renegade Bane Blade, takes off 15 wounds, he's slain by the, the tracks from the unit or something else, and then just before he's removed, fights again and takes out the target. It's great fun. It's a great fun unit to have as well. So, you know, hobby-wise, great Blood Angels themed unit. Competitive-wise, loads of damage potential can come from him. And then actually playing the game and enjoying the game is a very enjoyable unit to use as well. So then Psychic Powers, the icing on the cake here for this unit. He's definitely number one. There's no way I can... I'm not going to budge on the number one choice here. The others, yeah, you can argue the case, but... I, I challenge you to show me a bit... <laughs> A unit that's better than him for the Blood Angels. <laughs> Just provoke people into uh, writing the uh, comments here, but I, I, I very highly rate him. Um, so, yeah, so he can manifest two psychic powers and he can take two. So, first of all, number six, Wings of Sanguinis. This is a pair that work together really well, especially on this unit. So Wings of Sanguinis has a warp charge value of five. So first of all, this is very, very likely this is going to go off, which is good news. If manifested, the Psychic can immediately move as if it were the mo movement phase. So remember, this is during the Psychic phase. But his movement characteristic is also increased to 12. So remember, you've moved to so a normal Dreadnought. Six inch move, and you're trying to gradually get there. But this guy, six inch move, and all of a sudden, 12 inches again in the Psychic phase. So now you've got a Dreadnought that looks slow, can actually hop around the table very very quickly he's moving as quick as a dark held of venom <laughs> so he's very very quick and it's great it's very reliable it's uh warp charge value of five so very likely it's going to go ahead it gains the fly keyword um to the next psychic phase in addition whilst the power is in effect you could re-roll foul charge rolls as well so if he does fail he gets to re-roll his charge which is fantastic so that's really good that's the power you want to go off, if, if you need him to get into position. If you don't need him to get in position, then perhaps he can smite from behind your friendly units. But that one's quite reliable, and that's the one you often need to make sure it goes ahead. Then this one's kind of your added bonus. If this one goes off on top, then he's souped up to the to the max this one. So warp charge value of 7, so there's half a chance it may not go off. Uh, if this one has gone off, then it's well worth keeping that command reroll on standby 
uh, to, to have a chance of making this one go ahead if it fails first time. If manifested, you can add three to advance and charge rolls. So you've got a re-rollable charge, now with three inches added on top of that charge, and you get D3 additional attacks with them in the fight phase until the start of your next psychic phase. So D3 extra attacks in your turn and in your opponent's turn if he's still alive, still fighting away. So now you've got base of three attacks, extra attack for space range, extra D3 for red rampage, extra D3 on top of that for quickening. Now all of a sudden you've got a humble dreadnought that could waddle around at six inch move with three attacks. Now you can go 18 inches with 10 attacks. <laughs> so. And, and you've not spent any extra points, you're still 143 points. All you're doing is just using multiple combinations of stratagems, warlord traits, psychic powers and so on, uh, relics uh, and so on, just to add, just to stack up uh, multiple abilities to turn him from sort of humble stat line to something that's incredible. So I, I love doing that 40k and that's one of the great things about the game in general, you can just go for these combinations that just fantastic so uh, that's how you can turn a humble dreadnought into an absolute killer on the battlefield and so often you're seeing games I'll throw him in sometimes quite early in the game against the target so he sees the target goes for it and it's sort of a kamikaze banzai charge where he goes in he's gonna die but the damage he causes is well worth it and he, he destroys way more in points than what I've actually paid for him to bring him into the list. So uh, that's number one here. I think he's, he's miles ahead of the others. Uh, massive fan of the Librarian Dragnaut. So that's it, top five units for the Blood Angels. As I said, by all means, leave your comments. It'd be fascinated to hear what other people have to say. Maybe there's units that I don't have that you say, yeah, Luke, if you're listening to what people are saying, then you take this, this, and this for the Blood Angels. They're great options to take. Maybe you agree with some of these, you want to change the order around. Or maybe you think, yeah, these are these are the top five, it's probably very unlikely <laughs> that everyone's going to uh, agree with this, these ones here. But uh, I think some of these for sure are great Blood Angels options to take. And you notice a lot of these, they, they're themed very nicely for Blood Angels as well. The same good old Smash Captain, like Brown Dreadnought, Def Company. All very strong Blood Angels units, choices. But uh, leave your own comments, give a look out for more top five videos on the channel, just working my way through the different armies and giving you uh, as much information as I can as you build your own Blood Angels list. And maybe you're an experienced Blood Angels player and you sort of disagree with the, the choices I've made, well try them out, you know, experiment with some of the recommendations I've made here and see how you get on. But that's the top five for the Blood Angels. Keep a look out for more videos on the channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.